Today's video is called The Revolution of 1800, and it's, we're going to be talking about America's first transfer of power between one political party to another. Now, obviously, the word revolution is in the air quotes there because it wasn't the kind of revolution that you're probably thinking of, but we'll get to that. So let's uh, first start by looking at how did we get to this point. Real quick, let's recap. So first of all, we had George Washington, who was the first president of the United States. He did not belong to any political party. He did some good things. He provided strong leadership for our country. He got the government started strong. He decided neutrality between France and England, which ended up being the right choice ultimately. However, during his time, political parties, the Federalists and the Democratic Republicans, began to form. And he retired with a big problem between France and England. So... Toward the end of Washington's presidency, we start to see these problems form, and one of the biggest problems was the formation of political parties, which leads us to our second president, who was John Adams. He was a Federalist, so he was the first president to belong to a political party. And John Adams, as we've been talking about this week, took a bad rap for the passing of Alien and Sedition Acts, but John Adams also had to deal with full-fledged political parties, which means that himself and the Federalists were basically counteracting everything the Democratic Republicans were trying to do, and vice versa. The one thing that stands out from John Adams' time as president is the fact that he passed the Alien and Sedition Acts, and we've been debating that all week. But what the Alien and Sedition Acts do for the Federalists is it makes John Adams very unpopular with the people. So when it comes time for John Adams to run for president again, his re-election is very questionable, even though peace with France is achieved. So John Adams loses that election in 1800, and he loses it to someone named Thomas Jefferson. You may have heard of him. So Thomas Jefferson is the first Democratic-Republican president to be elected. And the election was Jefferson versus Adams, and it was one of the first elections where party politics was really involved. You have one clear party, the Democratic-Republicans, versus another clear party in the Federalists. So... Anyway, Jefferson wins the election of 1800 against Adams. He is just determined to start putting the Republican Party beliefs into law. For all these years with Adams, and even before that a little bit with Washington, more Federalist beliefs were being passed into law and very few Republican beliefs. So let's kind of see what happens here. Jefferson declares his election a revolution because of the new ideas he's going to be bringing into the government. So the first idea that the Democratic Republicans have is a smaller government. And you see the cartoon here, they're, they're thankful for a small government that's unobtrusive to their lives. The first thing that, to make the government smaller, what Jefferson does, is he cuts the number of government workers. If you don't have as many people to do work, then the government can't do as much. You have a smaller government. Jefferson also eliminates all federal taxes, which means there's no money for the, or very little money for the government to operate on, and therefore very little power that the government will have. Finally, Jefferson shrinks the military that was boosted up by Adams. When there was a threat of war, he boosted up the army and the navy, and Jefferson gets rid of much of that. No military power, less power for the government. So three things that Jefferson did to make the government smaller. Tea partiers today would really like a lot of these things that Jefferson did back then. Idea two was something called laissez-faire. It's a vocab word. And laissez-faire means that the government simply will not interfere in the economy, not interfere with businesses. People are going to be free to operate their businesses and lives without the government putting regulations or restrictions on what they do. So a lot of Hamilton policies was getting really involved in the, in the government and a lot of really involved in the economy that was Hamilton as a Federalist. Jefferson's going to do the opposite, and he's going to leave the economy alone, not get involved, and let people do their thing without regulations from the government. Democratic-Republican idea number three is rights, human rights for people, and natural rights. So Jefferson allows the Alien and Sedition Acts to, to run, run out. They had a time limit on it. He lets them expire. Everybody that was put in jail by John Adams under the Sedition Act, they were all let go and, and freed from prison. And basically, this sends an example to the, to the American public that Jefferson is going to respect the Bill of Rights and the rights of the people. Democratic-Republican idea four is the image of government. And this one's kind of silly, but it's actually really important. Jefferson believed that the government should act like regular people. 
just because you're the president doesn't mean you're special, doesn't mean you get to wear a fancy clothes or act fancy or do fancy things. So Jefferson lived this motto of being a regular person, and he really tried very hard to portray the image of being a regular guy, even though he was quite wealthy and he was a president. So he walked to his own inauguration twice. There was no fancy parade, no carriage, nothing like that where the other presidents were inaugurated. He simply just walked out in the street, strode up to the podium, gave a speech, and walked home. No big deal. Jefferson would also let strangers come into the White House and visit for tours. You could just knock on the door and he'd say, yeah, come on in, tour the White House. And finally, Jefferson was also famous for even greeting visitors in pajamas and slippers. He wouldn't, you know, worry about having to get dressed or do all those things. No need to impress anybody. And you can imagine what would what the world would be like if Snuggies were invented back when Jefferson around. You can imagine he'd be walking around his house in a Snuggie greeting visitors and diplomats and things like that. The last Democratic-Republican idea that Jefferson really changed was the idea of compromise. Jefferson kept some Federalists in the government um, just to show that he was willing to work with both sides, which was a little different from what the Federalists did. He continued Hamilton's debt ideas and his debt plan and continued to pay down state debt with national money. There was no attempt at reversing the National Bank that Hamilton passed, and he even allowed many Federalists in the government to keep their jobs. So those five things were five things that Jefferson did when he became president, and he referred to those things as the Revolution of 1800, because it was such a change from the policies of Adams and even to some extent Washington. So America had a successful first transfer of power from one political party to another, and it really set the example that different ideas can come and go, and there wouldn't be violence or revolution or anything like that, um, at least not the revolution that we're thinking of. So go into the discussion board, answer the question, and we'll um, start thinking about these ideas on Monday with a pretty interesting activity.